Welcome to our second Sunday of Easter celebration, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. And we are glad that you join with us to pray for all our people and all our world again today. And we begin. Peace be with you. In our first reading, the disciples are eating together with a spirit of gladness and generosity. And in this time of COVID, we need some of that gladness and generosity too. So as we gather for God's banquet here, we pray for that spirit of gladness and generosity. Mani tu kiti ma ki na wi na Mani tu kiti ma ki na wi na Sezus kiti ma ki na wi na Sezus kiti ma ki na wi na Mani tu kiti ma ki na wi na Mani tu kiti ma ki na wi na May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Everlasting mercy, Kitsumanato Nielsen, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal feast kindle the faith of your people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have given that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font we have been washed, by whose spirit we have been reborn, by whose blood 
we have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread in various houses and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. First letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A birth into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that through perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord.
with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you return the sins of any, they are returned. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel, we see the risen Jesus appearing to his apostles. In a prior visit, Jesus revealed himself as the risen Christ. They got to see, touch, and to feel him. He was real. Thomas, on the other hand, was not there, so he lacked that experience. How can someone believe such a thing without having some proofs? And so Jesus appeared to him as well and presented his hands, his feet, and his side. The risen Christ was very real. Thomas believed. Jesus says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. That would be us. I believe we all need an experience of the risen Christ. This COVID-19 gives us the opportunity to reflect on what we believe. Can we have an experience of Christ? Have I experienced the risen Christ in the midst of this pandemic? 
I'm going to share with you a story. The bishop would claim it's ancient history, but nonetheless, my first posting was over in Eli Lacrosse. I was there from 1972 to 1976. And one day I received a call from Bishop Dumichel inviting me to come to the PA for a meeting of all the priests. He had asked Demetrius Michaelides, a Jesuit theologian, to share with us his findings on the charismatic renewal. He wanted us to be aware of what was happening. From what I knew of this movement, they were what I called Jesus freaks. And I formulated a whole bunch of questions that would challenge this group. I remember his opening statements. Anyone who says the Holy Spirit works only in the institutional church is a heretic. Anyone who says the Holy Spirit works only in the charismatic renewal is a heretic. The Spirit moves where he wills, and it is our responsibility to discern this. In the course of this workshop, the prayer group from Flinflon came down, and they were going to have a prayer meeting a demonstration of how this worked. I remember being impressed with this group of people. They were speaking to us, a bunch of priests, about Jesus. Can you imagine? And strange, I didn't realize when the meeting started and hardly when it finished. It wasn't like any other meeting that I have been attended. And at one point, they stopped, and they asked if, if any one of us would allow them to pray for us individually. And they asked me specifically, what do you say? I'm a priest. I'm supposed to be the one that helps them not them, me. I was terrified. I don't know what I expected to happen, or, but I was, I was afraid. Another priest went up before me, and they gathered around him, laid their hands on him, and they prayed. And he lived. And so I was a little less terrified when it became my turn. I don't know what really happened at this moment, but I know there was a deep peace that came over me. I went back to the residence where I was staying under a, they gave me a room. Well, it wasn't really a room, it was the lobby. I was the young kid, so. And over, over the, the bed was a clock. And it had the sickest bell that you could imagine. Bink, 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 every 15 minutes. And under most circumstances, I would have simply stopped the clock. But I found myself waking up and praying. Can you imagine? I couldn't get enough of it. In the morning, we returned to the hall, and again we prayed. At the end of this session, as I returned home, I was called to go by via Saskatoon and pick up a sister. I'd been to their place many times, and the sister that answered the door looked at me and asked, what happened to you? I had no idea. And I got the same response when I got home. They wanted me to share what I had learned and experienced. And so we began to have meetings. 
I believe that this was an encounter with the risen Lord. I have not had the privilege of the apostles, but nonetheless, I do believe I have experienced the risen Lord. Jesus is risen. So what is your story? When did you become aware of the gentle touch of Jesus? This is Divine Mercy Sunday. We, will, we become aware of the great mercy of God. This is what the passion, death, and resurrection of the Lord is all about. This COVID-19 experience invites us not to be afraid. Instead, we pray that we experience once again the divine mercy of God, the risen Lord. So now in your homes and again here in our cathedral, we say what we truly believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Reaching out to the risen Christ, we bring to him our prayers of the faithful again today. For the church throughout the world, witness to God's kingdom in daily life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are hungry, lonely, abused, sick and dying, especially those who are abandoned or destitute, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For us, God's people gathered here, fed from God's table, and called to feed all God's children, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray as well for William Balfour of uh, Thompson, who passed away a couple days ago, for his mom, Lynn, and for all his family, his children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. There's been some cases of COVID that have occurred now in Lalash and in the elders' home. So in a special way, we lift up Lalash, also South End, where there are some cases. So we lift all our communities up to you, Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And for your other prayers as well. We pray to the Lord that he may increase our faith and help us overcoming our fear and our doubts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to pray in a special way for those people who are suffering some mental anguish with this code. Ask the Lord to be present with them and put the right people in their, in their midst to help them cope with this stressful time. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. It's a monotone, the now we lift up all these prayers we've spoken aloud and those in our hearts. Help us to encounter the risen Christ and to find gladness and generosity in him. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness with this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, salut Ina, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those who have brought to new birth in baptism, that renewed by confession of your name, we may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times and above all, to have allowed you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Samanato, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Seedarie, Nieze Sezus, nu ga schrijver, Nagidaio, Genaif Nihef. Du hare, Bezitu, Bedelletu, nu ga vonne de la. Nenelle de Dethuio, ne Bahonzon, Aridaha. Nu gena te zit a, Marsi, ne je nieden se. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Mary Shefflin, our Archbishop, and with all the members of the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us while we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> Pray together in our homes and here as Jesus taught us for the grace of the Easter season to come into our minds and hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share Christ's peace with one another that we're with. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I now invite you to make a spiritual communion in your home and that Christ truly is with you and your family at this time. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, Kitsamanato, that our reception of this Easter sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. One is that on Wednesday evenings at 7.30 Manitoba time, 6.30 Saskatchewan time, we'll be live streaming the rosary. We invite you to send in any prayer intentions through Facebook and that we'll uh, offer the prayers for, for during that rosary, 7.30 p.m. Wednesday nights, Manitoba time, 6.30 Saskatchewan time. Also, many people ask me, when can we start coming to Mass again? None of us have that answer yet. It looks like at least till the end of April, for sure, we won't be able to. But as soon as we uh, get uh, permission from the government and we're adjusting, back again, then we'll let you know about our ability to gather. But it will happen. Uh, in the Gospels, Jesus is so playful in this time of the resurrection and that we need to retain some of that playfulness even in this time of COVID. And so I just invite you, we have 50 days of the Easter season to try to ask that playfulness of God to be in our spirit too in this time of too much seriousness. And so we pray for that grace at this time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.